Hot mic, hot mic. What are you talking about? I got us muted, we're fine. Yeah, we're muted. Nobody can hear us. Ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ho. Chesapeake, Virginia. Cheese a pika. Is that, that what people say? No, I don't think so. I don't think anyone says that. I don't think so. anyone says cheese a pika. It's like calling rally uh, Rayleigh. I don't think anybody does that either. I do call home home people home to pot. Sure. Of course. 15 seconds. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What is even, are you ready for this? I don't know, are you? No, stop the stream, quick, stop, stop, stop. Right, all right, five, four, three, two. Hey, look at that, we're live. RC Maniac, can you hear me, can you see me? We, we always wait for that. <laughs> We've gotta make sure, we make sure I'm seen and I'm heard. That's kind of important. Robert Martin, hi from Ole, Washington. Oh, sweet, sweet. I guess they could hear us though, because, you know, Whatever, the mic. <laughs> we don't so they could hear us. talk about that. There we go. I see a woo from Big Jano. So that must mean good things. Frank uh, Miklos with an oh my goodness. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, Yazo? Yazo? They're in the chat. The Siege Tower GC. Hope you, hope you ate this time before starting the stream with four ninety nine. I did. In fact, roughly... 10 minutes ago, I got pizza, a barbecue chicken pizza. And I put two of those pieces in my tummy. You sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna put more in my tummy later. That's the, that's the cool thing about pizza. Uh, someone met, see, David Wilson, Fan Mail Friday, in all caps. So I hope that doesn't mean you're shouting. But uh, yeah, uh, Sean has a Fan Mail Friday in the edit bay right now. Sure do. Right now. And originally, we went with three things to open, and then, oh my goodness, something happened. So you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> you'll have to wait and see. NLTMW. This guy looks familiar. I hope you're talking about me. Yeah, I hope. You shouldn't be seeing anything I else. hope. NLTMW. Never let the machines win. Yes, that's Never great. let the machines win. That's pretty good. Uh, we have in this box right here that I have uh, removed... Labels from this is the uh, this is the Cerambot Yazao Yazo Yazao. Yeah, yeah, I hope I'm getting it right. This is a ceramic 3D printer, and I don't mean it actually. It, it so it prints like a like a a sludge or a goo or a paste or a, you know something like that. It's a paste 3D printer, but it's built for their ceramic pastes. And what I really like, most of the time you see a paste 3D printer or something that is able to, you know, a peanut butter printer, chocolate printer, take your pick. I want a peanut butter printer. The load, the load is attached to the machine somehow. Uh, with a chocolate printer, I mean, I understand because you have to keep it at a certain temperature and then you have to extrude it right away. But, but with this, it looks like since the, the slurry, I'm just going to keep calling it different names because the stuff, the goo is off the machine in a cylinder that uh, has an auger, no, a compressor, I don't know, something. But anyway, it's almost like it's a Bowden setup, which, I, which is interesting because it means that the machine itself is lighter, lightweight, easier to maintain, and uh, that's just kind of cool. That's just kind of cool. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Clay, the Azo Ceramic 3D Printer. Clay, ah, that's no fun. I mean, I understand. Uh, also, listen, so this, this 3D printer is Kickstarter. And I, you know, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with Kickstarter 3D printers. Hey, I love them because sometimes we breed new cool technology and they get to go 3D printer skydiving in the studio. And the other times, um, you end up with a Robo R2. And we all know how that ended. Their Kickstarter is live for another less than 24 hours. And I'm not here to promote a Kickstarter. I'm here to show you some cool tech and to let you know that's where it's available. And you can make a grown-up decision as to whether or not you want to back something like this. Hey, with all that said, let's see. Let's check the chat. Make sure. 
AGB question. OMG, 3D printed cookies. Perfect. With that comment, we will get going. <laughs> uh, I must say, so typically when we do an unboxing, I have to take the knife of cutting and slit the tape of holding in order to open the box of goodies. With this one though, because we're dealing with product that could expire, we check to make sure that the clay, oh, I said clay, shoot, that the clay inside was still okay. So I got it open enough to take out these cylinders. Can you see those, Sean? Look at that. Oh. These, uh, these, these tubes, these are almost like uh, giant syringes or uh, the, I don't know, I guess you put a needle on the end of it, you're good to go. But there's clay inside of here, it is non-cured and you shove something in here to push it out and then it comes out here through the Bowden assembly. And so we verified that the clay was good and I, I, I like, I touched it. I touched it and it seemed like it was in a good state. And so I was like, this, this is where we go to town right here. This is where we pop something open and we, we have fun. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, good to go. Is that nice? Good to go, super nice. Super nice. Unboxings just mean more stuff. Uh, with this being a Kickstarter, I don't know if this is final packaging, but uh, it is packaged well. It looks like the delivery service had its way with it, but it still survived. There's a lot of foam on the inside to keep it safe and I secure. I can't see it. There's some. Oh, I know what this is. This. <laughs> Have a look at that. That's part of a microwave kiln. Because this ceramic clay doesn't come out as a, a hard piece of ceramic material, you have to bake it in a kiln. And because I don't have a kiln, what they have is a small little ceramic kiln. And what I can do is put the piece in here, put that in the microwave, and then, uh, and then, and then dinner's done. So is that size like the, the amount of size you have for the whole thing? Oh, look more. There's more. There we go. Yeah. So that size, boy, this is going to be a dirty one, isn't it? It sure is. So this size right here is what I'm going to be able to print with tonight if everything works and goes as according to plan. I know that you can do larger, but uh, I, I can't technically do larger because you need to be able to bake it in a kiln, and this is the kiln we have. So we now know our constraints for what we have ahead of us. Do they offer more kilns? kilns? I, I don't well, I know. Guess, I guess you gotta fit it in a microwave. That's actually a really good question. You do have to fit it in a microwave. Luckily, that'll fit in our small microwave, but uh, uh, as the Sarambot people, they are in the chat. And so if, that, uh, if they can answer that question, that'd be cool. Um, and LTMW, everybody like that smash button. Yes, everybody like the smash button. And smash the like button. Just I think that's our, how it our, goes. Our live stream gets seen by more people when you smash or like the smash button. Exactly. I almost said it right. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. I'm just box. gonna see. It's in the box right here. I just. Uh, no, I can't see that. I know you can't see it, <laughs> but they can see it on the big camera. Yep. It's like uh, it's like giving birth to technology. What was that on Napoleon Dynamite, right, the brother? I love technology. Yes, correct. Just don't do what I do, which is just turn the box over and dump everything out. No, that's a bad thing. I know. <laughs> You're in the bad place. <laughs> the print surface, look at that, is like a, 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 a composite wood, maybe? Poster board? I don't know. Some sort of material. It's worth like $300 right now. It's wood. Oof. This is the off board extruder. And this is going to be the Bowden setup right here. Wow. This is kind of cool. Okay. We got some pictures. And look, a spare tube so I could pack it with my own stuff, like peanut butter. Mm hmm. Here's another tube. Everybody's doing okay. Chris, the viola nerd. Hey, Joel. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Let's get this bad boy out. Wow. 
boom, 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 boom. Almost need a Seinfeld-esque sort of boom, you know. Oh, I remember. Here we go. Hua! It has been birthed. Birthed. It looks pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. God, my desk is a mess. <laughs> this is gonna be. This is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Frank Miklos, MDF. Yes. What is MDF? A Mo multi multi density fiber board. <laughs> Asking the wrong person. <laughs> Here's the power connector. It is a um, European power connector. I'll have to get my adapter. That's fine. It's fine. We have That's one fine. of those, right? I have adapters. Yeah, it's actually uh, right up there. That's very specific, thank you. I'm sorry, it's in that, that, yes, that. There are, I believe, adapters in there. No, not that, there's the other things. No, the other things aren't there. Like those things. Okay. Nice catch. Thanks. Just like that. <laughs> Safety first, kids. <laughs> you know. That was almost a disaster. <laughs> well, we had that. And just to make sure, uh, this is a 12 volt, 140 watt input, 100 to 240 volts. And there's no need for me to switch between 110 and 220, which is good. So it's an auto switching power supply, which means this should work. Nice. And if it doesn't and the power blows, then it's just stream over and thank you. <laughs> Someone says the Y-axis belt has fallen off. What? What? No, no, no. There's a, there's a zip tie. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a big old zip tie. That's what I thought. Yeah. Let's, let me get my clips. Let me find my clips. I got a lot of stuff in this drawer I should uh, go through. Here we go. I need new clippers, apparently. Gee, oh, okay, there we go. I was going to say. This is a powerful zip tie. Oh no, I'm gonna sneeze. Don't do it. Oh no. Bye. I'm holding it. What is it, if you do this, right? Doesn't that, doesn't that uh, stop your sneezes? I, I just hold it in. <laughs> it's not good. That's not good. Oh, the company is saying the belt is off. Oh, I see. Over I'm sorry, here. I couldn't look over here. Thanks, David. Producer David is watching, making sure things get seen. So it looks like the belt is off of the machine. Okay. Let's fix that. Yeah, let's fix that. Okay. Uh... Okay, it looks like I'm gonna need some zip ties. So this is a case where, Sean, can you zoom in right there? Can uh, you see that? As much as I can, yep, that's as okay. far as I can go. So this is a, a standard belt, and typically what you do is loop it through and then zip tie it so that the teeth are biting on themselves, and that way stuff won't come out. And I think what happened, let's just, here, let me, let me do this. So then, yeah, there we go. So the belt just needs to go through. There's two tiny holes right here. And if I get the belt through there, I can take off the old zip ties. Uh, must take apart screws? What? Why must I take a... <laughs> Why must I take apart screws? I see the problem. So there's two holes right here. And it looks like the belt goes up through one and down through the other. And then there are zip ties holding the teeth together so that it binds upon itself. It's still within all of the mechanics of, of moving down below. And so I think that's all it's needed. You need to remove the screws of the platform. I don't... Okay. <laughs> Okay. 
I think I can solve the problem, but the company is telling me a specific way to solve the problem, and I think it's best if I follow the instructions of the company. They're telling me to take the, uh, the bed off with the four screws, so I will do that. If that's the correct, need to remove the screws of the platform and install the Y-axis belt. Okay, the, so the belt is still around the pulleys, and I don't think this is necessary, but... But we'll have fun in the meantime. But we'll, we'll have fun in the meantime. I just, uh, I wanna find a little bit of tape, a little bit of tape, just because I wanna kinda hold some things in place. Oh. Tooling around. I see it over here, tooling around, sent a $5 super chat. The black belt on the side of the bed is sticking out. Seems to be off the motor. There we go. <laughs> I guess I should have read that earlier. Uh, it is not off the motor. Everything is still connected. It's just, I need to loop it around those two spots. But, but uh, the official answer from the company is to take the bed off and that'll actually give us a better look because you never know, something else might be wrong. So while I'm confident in my answer, I think doing this will give us a better idea. Oops. There we go. Oh yeah, you can see that, can't you? I could. <laughs> There's some springs that might spring at some point. So I just want to make sure I'm keeping track of those. Spring too much. <laughs> spring, spring, sprung. Oh yeah, I taped the belts so I can't move the bed back. <laughs> we'll get there, I promise. Graphene pixel, I just noticed this in my notifications. Hey, it's working. That's good. Yeah, removing the build plate is going to make it easier. My guess is what I have intended for the solution is the same thing that they want done, but in removing the build plate, we'll be able to access it easier. That's good. It's good to know that like my intuition was correct and the company's instructions are just going to make me easier to accomplish the solution I had in mind. Do, 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 do. There we go. I will carefully remove this. Nice. That was pretty careful. And I just want to show you, look at that, all four springs are standing. They're very sprung. So if I'm looking in the back, uh, I'm gonna to try to flip this over so you guys can see it too. Give me just a moment, but I think it's important for you to see this just in case this helps in your troubleshooting journeys. Okay. So have a look right here. You can see that the belt comes in, goes around itself and back, and then holds on to itself teeth to teeth. Uh, it's also got a tensioner right here. So that's a belt tensioner and there's two, there are two zip ties right here holding it in. It goes there and then you can kind of peek through the window right here. Belt goes over this pulley and it goes up and over this one on the motor and then under this pulley and then it goes back to the side of the bed. It's very, very similar to how the mechanic or to how the, the mechatronic system is done on the, uh, the Daedalus actually. Hmm. Let's see, look at that. So I'm holding this tight and you can see the motor spin and you can see the pulleys route the belt. And so what's next is to put this through here and then zip tie it down really tight with as many zip ties as I can put on there. Uh, since you're in the chat, Yazo, Saranbot, whatever the best way to call it is, um, it looks like the belt here is at a very, very minimum distance. Like there's, there is not a lot of slack there. And so in shipping units, if you could, I would advise just another centimeter of belt just i mean just just a little bit more to kind of make it happen i think that would future proof things but see i can put it through there and then through there and then i can just zip tie it that's the goal do you have zip ties somewhere i have some yeah prusa always sends you extra i save them yeah me too 
actually. <laughs> oh, what's David saying? What? Need to remove the screws of the, they say remove the spring. I did remove the springs, they're right here. I don't know if my watch is really behind, but. No, that just came through. Oh, it did? Okay. Maybe the stream is? Oh, maybe this, okay, I don't. Oh, you know what? Mm -mm. I know what they're saying. Remove the tensioner. So the tensioner is grabbing the belt and kind of pulling on both ends, and that provides tension kind of automatically. So if we can remove the tensioner, what we can do is attach the belt on this side. It'll give us a little bit of extra, and then we put the tensioner back on to just tighten it up perfect. So that's what we'll do. <laughs> uh, stream lagged a bit. Is everybody doing okay on the stream? David said the stream lagged a bit. So David is my producer. He's down in Los Angeles. He is watching this and watching the chat. And then he's got a text line to me and Sean just to make sure we're not missing something. It's actually really valuable. Thank you, David. Chilling around with a $15 super chat while I'm here. Make the first print a vase mode hexagonal vase. Uh, I don't know what I'll make the first print. We'll have to look on, on to see what's on the included media, but uh, the goal would be to make something that I could pour liquid into and drink from. I think that's, that's the ultimate test. Let's just get this out. Do it. Um, I want some small pliers, just some little needle nose. Well, These are not our, small, but it's all I got. All of our live streams end up turning into troubleshooting streams. Hey, you know what? I almost said I just want this to be a chill stream. But you did. You said it before the stream. That's true. You said sorry. it out loud. I'm sorry. That's what. That's why this happened. Is it? Yeah. Oh, is that why? There we go. Tensioner's off. Oh, have a look. Can you see this right here, Sean? Yeah. Look how much extra belt there is right here. That's quite a bit. Wow. I'm guessing what happened in transport is there wasn't enough belt to hold on to it, and the zip ties slipped a little bit, and then it just popped out. So it's honestly not that big of a deal at all, and I think extra QC when putting these together would probably solve the problem. Just, just another step in a checklist. I think that's all that we're missing here. It got us a little bit of extra. A little bit. I mean, there's a lot extra on that side. <laughs> just to undo the whole thing. Now, I'll just take it apart. <laughs> I'll just take it apart, and then we'll build a rocket. Yes. <laughs> With peanut butter. A peanut butter rocket. I like that. It's not a bad idea. There we go. That'll hold up just fine. Uh, I am going to find some zip ties. Here we go. Got some, we got some chats. Oh, yeah, we got some chats. Uh... Iron Sniper 1 sent a $5 super chat. High five. Any advice for getting good prints from a CR10 S5? I have all upgrades except linear rails. Well, I don't know the problems you're getting, but I mean, it's it's just, it's the, it's a Bowden setup extruder and you have some fans cooling it. You've got a big bed. Uh, I, I don't know what the problem is, but getting good prints is just sitting down and dialing in the settings and then troubleshooting the areas where you have problems. And, uh, I don't know what problems you have, so I can't really help out, but there's, there are ways of just following a checklist to get that done. Nunya Music, $16! This is just to dare others to also donate. <laughs> I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> appreciate you. Appreciate, yeah, super appreciate. That's, that's fantastic. Look, uh, no one has to accept the dare, obviously, but if you do, if you do, I will, uh, I will say thank you. Um, <laughs> I wonder if they include it. Let's see. Let's look in the box. Maybe they included extra zip ties. They did not. <laughs> it's in the background of every shop. Did I hit it? People will find out what that was they on uh, Fan Mail Friday. That's correct. This Fan Mail Friday, uh, our friend Eddie sent a special gift to Sean. It's probably one of his favoritest things in the world, and you'll get to see mm. it. Favoritist. Mm. That's a word I would not use to describe it. Ha-ha! Nice. Here's my Prusa spare bags, spare parts bag. Look at this. 
This is fantastic. Justin Adams, $4.99. You out of your mind? He is. You got me into 3D printing, and now I have a print farm. I thank you for so much inspiration. Wow. A print farm. That's fantastic. You do print all the things. Well, I, I'm impressed. I, I hope you're having a lot of fun with your print farm, and you're printing all the things. You have to let me know how many machines are in your print farm. I came to Seattle and got a print farm. It's true. It's just... <laughs> the side effect. I'm going to attach this zip tie loosely so that I can position it properly and then tighten it the rest of the way. Nice. It's going to be tricky. I have faith. Thanks. See, Losing I, faith. What? Nothing. What? Why would you do that? <laughs> okay. There we go. Do we know how Neil's dragon turned out? I have it on good authority that Neil's dragon turned out. As to how well it turned out, you're just going to have to wait and see. I hate doing that to you. I really do. I really, really do. But uh, I've heard from Neil. And every, I, I'm just going to, I don't, you know, I'm not even going to tease it. I'm just going to say, I've heard from Neil. The dragon did finish. Done. <laughs> Is that terrible? Yeah. It's awful. The worst. The worst. Phil Nolan with a high five. I'm guessing what it prints will be slip. Very wet clay. I think, I don't know about very wet, but it should have a consistent, it should be of a certain consistency, consistency ugh, so that it can at least stand on its own. Because if you have clay st stacked on top of clay, I mean, like concrete is very wet and you have the rebar and the forms to keep it in, in, in place. So with this, you don't have forms. It has to s sustain its own weight. So I, there must be a height limit that you can print this at or some sort of, sort of, um, factor and how much weight it can it can bear that's what i'm thinking i wonder if print height determines the moist level i don't play. know okay i wonder if you can vary it that'd be interesting i'm almost at the point of uh i think no getting return. back into business nice Ooh. Okay, that seems to be good. So at the very least, though, um, I, think, I think it's interesting because in, in the age of products, you know, the, the issues of right to repair and being able to fix your own products, 3D printing is special because not only are you expected to be able to fix your own product, uh, pro uh, the, your own product that you have, you're you know, it's, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Um, something like this, so we had a problem right out of the box, and with a little bit of investigation, we were able to find the problem and find a solution for the problem, and now it looks to be fixed. So I'm just going to add the tensioner back on in the back, and we should be back in business. I'm going to do a little test. Everything seems to be moving appropriately. That's good news. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you Could you scroll down a little bit for me? Over on the chat? I'm sorry, the, the, no, no, that, that there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucas Anderson with a fiver. High five. Derek accepted none. Either way, I love your channel. And I've been 3D printing for a while now. Thanks for that. That's really kind of you. Michael Grugel. Oh, fix some dude. I love that guy. You got me into 3D printing and I blame you because I no longer have any extra time or money. Same. <laughs> Same. Uh, Nevin Lines sent $50. A $50 super chat. Nevin Lines. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's like 10 high fives. Challenge accepted. I love it. John A. and PD sent five. Does this particular 3D printer print ceramic prints or does the printer use ceramic components? No, no. It prints in a ceramic clay that is then fired in a kiln to produce a ceramic part. Tooling it around with a high five. It's going to print clay. Then you may need to fire it in a kiln. Okay, good. So <laughs> Tooling around answering the question. Thank you very much. 
John Stern with a 15. That is one, two, three fives. If you don't name this printer Harry Potter, I will never watch your channel again. <laughs> a brilliant. Uh, a thank you. That is fantastic. Let's get this on. This is kind of interesting because... Oop, don't oop. break it. No, no, it was sitting on the tape. So the tensioner has to be in a place that is out of... Uh, uh, out of the way for the motor and the pulleys, and so I just want to make sure I get this as high up here as I can. Doing that wrong. There we go. Oh, okay. Ow, ow. Ow, ow. <laughs> oh, please. Get in there. Do it. Okay, there we go. Try and try again. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be a chill stream, right, John? Yeah. It's just a chill, chill stream. Yeah. There we go. Nice Look at that. On. We've got the tensioner on. Nice. The only thing left to do now is to verify it doesn't get in the way of the... Oh. Womp, womp. Um, so there's so much travel in the bed that... It looks like the tensioner gets in the way, but it may not be, the bed not, might not be in a position that puts it in printable area. And the end stop right here, so this is home position. So then if you define your bed size correctly, if, as long as you go right there, you're fine. So as long as you don't go past that point, you should be good to go. Now it's time for the springs. Do you think I could put the springs in place and just drop it on? <laughs> no. You don't think so? <laughs> I, mm, no, I don't think you can. Well, we'll see what I happens. I don't think you can. We'll see what happens, oh ye of little faith. <laughs> I honestly don't think I can either, but you know what? I'm going to try. Okay. <laughs> Moment of truth. I can't see the front. How am I doing? Oh, I can see on video. Yeah, why don't you just look at the screen? It's like cheating. Oh, oh. no. Oh. Is that three or four? I think it's three or four. Hey, three or four. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Now we're cooking with gas. Now the, <laughs> now you got to put that one back in without dislodging any of the others. Yeah. Get back. Get back. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sweet. Now we just got to put these back on. I like where this is headed. I would imagine we do a leveling process. Probably. Someone said the tensioner is on backwards? Okay, let me put this on and then I'll take a look. I thought I put it on the right way. So how could you tell? It's so small on the screen. <laughs> Some people might be watching this on an 80-inch TV, Sean. It's true. It's true. It's I'm possible. I'm, I'm watching this on a 3-inch camera screen. So. Possible. That's true. 3.5-inch. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> I like it. This is the hard part right here. <laughs> putting, putting this back on. Okay, now we can check the tensioner. Um, that's correct. Oh. Yeah, that's 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 correct. Okay. Yeah. It is tensioning the belt. The belt has is under tension. Yes. <laughs> Truly around 15. The tensioner is on backwards. The coiled part needs to be on the other side, and one leg of the spring needs... Oh, he took a snapshot of the tensioner when I was trying to take it off. Okay, let's just check. Let's I double check because got to make sure things are correct. Someone said, I mean... 
I don't know of another way for that tensioner to go on. Because it's got the little scoops there. I, I don't know. I could move this leg up here so it wouldn't get in the way of the motor. Try, you know? I think it's okay though. Like I'm look, I don't think there's another way to put it on. Guess we'll find out. Guess we'll find out. <laughs> Print and play, 406. Oh, that's because he's Canadian. <laughs> Thanks, James. Uh, I respected you, Joel. Joel, never thought you'd start slinging mud. I like that. That's kind of you. <laughs> okay. Build volume, 150 by 150 by 240. Okay, so they are saying that uh, you can go 240 millimeters tall. Cool. Leveling. Clay pre-extrusion and preparing. Uh... Okay, looks like there's a couple things I need to do. Uh, one, I need to see where, uh, maybe it's back here. So the motor that pushes the clay needs to be connected and that's gonna be this cable here and it's gonna go, and it's gonna go, and it's gonna, gonna go, is it up here? Oh, it's up top. No? It is not up top. I don't know. Um, is there instructions? So, <laughs> let's take a look. Let's see if they provided a picture of where that needs to be plugged in. So it says... So, where are they plugging that into? Oh, I see. Huh. There's an actual pigtail. Uh, I figured it out. <sighs> leveling. Okay, it looks like we can plug it in and actually do the leveling of the platform. And then... And then go from there. Oh, that's the thing. Oh, those are going to be the clips. Where do they have clips on? Imagine. I mean, I can just kind of do that, maybe, and maybe, maybe that. Yeah. There's, uh, okay. Company send a power printer first to perform leveling. I think. Oh right! I know. I need to do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just putting the clips on. We're gonna power this on for the first time. I'll make sure and turn it this way so everybody can see. Green light means go. Ready? Install needles first, they're in the box. Okay, I can install needles. Needles was the name of the guy that, in Back to the Future, did the gambling thing that got, uh, that got Marty's dad fired or Biff fired or, do you remember? Did no, you see it? I, yes, I've seen Back to the Future. Don't you ask, never know. Don't, don't ask me details like. Ba, 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 ba. I love Back to the Future. The Maker's Cave, $5.99. Are you out of your mind? Might be good for jewelry. It's possible. I don't know the resolution you're going to get, but... There we go. Okay. Got that on there. Good, good. Select home. Oh, sorry, I'm going to... So is it best to turn it this way to you? Yes. To okay. Me. To me. Like that. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, come on. 
Maxi. There we go. Got it. Needles was Flea's kid. Thank you, David. Yes, Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers was Needles in the movie. Oh, feels good. Feels good. Okay. Um, it's really hard for me to see. So, leveling. No, 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 no. That's not first. Leveling. Select home. Home. Okay. All and Z can make the nozzle height return to zero. All and Z. So, I'll do... Oh. Hey, it's moving. Show sure is. Okay, cool. Oh, I see, okay. So leveling has to do with, there's a lock nut that you have to reach through here to be able to adjust. It looks like, let's see. Nozzle is 0 0.5 millimeters from the print bed, but it looks like it is below the print bed. So this is good that I did home all because if the bed had still been there, it would have lowered and crushed the nozzle. So I think, I think what we did was a good thing. I don't know, maybe, uh, well, let's see. So I, I, the bed is, I mean, the, these are tightened back here. So I need to adjust, let's see. Uh, oh. Oh, okay. Let's move that up a bit. Can I, oh, move. Z. I wanna go. There we go, okay. Did you get it? Yeah, I did. Oh, that's not easy to adjust. <laughs> okay. It's good that you don't do it on accident, though. Like, you know, it should be a little bit difficult uh, to make that. The way, if, if they're going to make it go like that. Oh, they just said in the chat, they recommend adjusting the four leveling nuts. Okay. Well, then I'll give that a go. If that's the recommended thing, that's definitely what I'll try. I was just going by the, the instructions. I'll just bring it down all the way. What do you say? Sounds good. We can go get some hay no, down by the bay. Stop it. Let's try the, the homing sequence again because uh, we tighten that down. Home all. Let's just see what happens. And we are just above the bed. Here, wait, let's, I'm gonna try something. So, if I go to move, and I go Y, and I go this way, you know, this way, there we go. <laughs> ready, ready? Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. That's good, here, I'll bring it over on X just a little bit. No, that way. <laughs> cool. So it's, it's. <laughs> I hope that's good enough. Um, I know, I know you're, you're in the chat. So you'll have to let me know. So how are you supposed to, oh, you undo that. And then, okay, I think it needs to be a little bit lower. Or connect the electric push rod cable and install clay. Okay. I don't know if we're at a good height. I understand what you're saying, David, but uh, going by the directions, the nozzle is too close to the print bed. And so I need to 
loosen this just a little bit so that I can make it get a little bit further away. Right? I don't know. Is that right? I think so, based on the instructions. We're at this point. Uh, so I, I, can't, I can't look at all the chat. Uh, but, time to break out the shims? No, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Time for the shims. And I don't know. So, who'd you say? Uh, El Moreo? Imagine the first Benchy. Uh, that's interesting, right? I don't know, because we're, we're, Benchy tests also, like, bridging and stuff. And I don't think, I don't think that is, is okay. Like, I don't think we can do that. Gantry is sagging. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Gantry is sagging. Uh, yikes. <laughs> uh, Okay. Can we tighten it down? So, well, so if I bring it up, it looks like it would be okay, but uh, gant the gantry is sagging, and it's going to get in the way, so I'm going to have to do, let's see. That's um, that's, that's not good. Like, I gotta bring that up. Okay, so let's, David, if you're listening, let me know if they say anything in the chat. The ESO cramic, uh, they say, uh, does not affect. It does not affect. Return the electric okay. push rod and install the clay pipe when you start out sagging gantry. That's from David. What did David say? Or let's see, I can check this. Yeah, and that's in our text chain. I know, but I have to look at it on my watch, right? Yeah. Return the electric push rod and install the clay pipe when you sort out this, okay. Um, so they said it doesn't matter, but that, like, if the nozzle's the right height here, it's gonna crush itself into the MDF build plate over here. Correct. Is there any way to tighten it? Oh, well, they're saying they put the thing in and maybe that'll Make it secure? I don't know. Um, there's really no way for me to adjust uh, the tilt on that. So there are, there are three rods and one lead screw on the inside. And the, the three rods, it's, uh, the bearings are loose against the rods, or the rods are kind of, yeah. OK. We're waiting for a reply on the gantry. But uh, I honestly wouldn't recommend going forward until we hear from Yazo. And I know they're in the chat. Uh, but this is saggy. And this is uh, something we just need to take care of. There has to be something to tighten in the back. Yeah, maybe. If there is, it's not accessible by anything that I can see. Um, yeah, and I and I don't I can't recommend taking this apart. Dave's waiting for a reply on the gantry. Okay. So how's everybody doing? <laughs> how's it going? So the rear adjustment bolt you loosened moves when you move the gantry. Yes, yeah. So uh, it's really, really hard to see. Uh, I'll try to get you a look. Can you see right in there? There we go. Kind of, yeah. Okay, so the gantry is kind of flexing a little bit. Yep. Oh, you know what? No. I want to show you something. Okay, ready? Ready? This this view right here, Sean. No, right there. Ready? Ready? I'm going to push on this side. So, 
So then if this is pushed in, the gantry kind of levels itself off a little bit. So it looks to be the gantry isn't supported well and it's leaning against the metal part that isn't attached to anything. They said, go for it. <laughs> I love it. Alex Nettles. Dude, send it. All right. We're going to send it. All right. That's fair. All right. We're going to send it. <laughs> Company wants us to. Sure. Now, where's that thing go? So it says, though. So that goes on the side there. That might be better. No, support. no. This, this doesn't attach to the machine. Oh. No, this is separate from the machine. Oh. Yeah. I should at least, like, adjust this, right? I mean, all right. If we're going to send it, we're going to send it. I'm going to tape the sides? Something? I mean, I could. Here, let's. I mean, I'm going to send it, but I'm going to add tape because <laughs> uh, why not? Oh, wait, where's that, uh, where's that red tape? That's what I figured you were looking for. There it for. is. Throw it over there. Yep. Just because that will level it up. Or just a little bit. But at least it'll be, yeah. This is the, the crazy naval tape that Greengate sent. I don't want to throw that. That has destructive power. Here we go. Probably more tape than I need, but you know what? It's a lot more tape than you need. Like, oh. I'm sending it. <laughs> no tape, just send it. No, I'm going to tape it. It's a yeeter. Just you guys it. want me to just yeet it, right? Just, just, yeet, just it. yeet it right off of it. No, come on. We got to at least try, right? Uh, there we go. Okay. Plus... Now it's red. I've personalized this. Now it's yours forever. No, but look, 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 look. It's actually reduced some of the sag. Not a lot, not all of it, but some of it. And so this is going to give us most likely a slightly better result. So yes, we're still sending it. It just means we're putting on a helmet, but incorrectly. Got to send it. Love you guys. Seriously. First mod. <laughs> That's right. 3D printing is all about modding your printer. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. As a kid, I made a lot of duct tape G.I. Joe forts. Okay. And this goes in the big tails in the back. You see that right there? No. How about now? No. Yeah, kind of. Sure. Oh. Uh. Okay, that's connected. The printer now looks better. This is a pre-plugged cartridge. Okay. Let's see, so to get it out, I have to take these off. Let's see, so what they would send like an empty cartridge in there to the red tape makes it faster by JT. Sporluck. Red tape makes it faster. Oh <laughs> Jinx. Red stripe evils. Go fast. Oh, this is so good. Okay. Okay. So see, that fits neatly into there. So these are the empty ones. Oh, wait. I need, I need uh, this. Okay. What do we got there? Uh, Nothing your music with a fiver. High five. A fiver for sending it. Yes, we're going to send it. There we go. Totally around with a fiver. I'm assuming this is a pre production unit, and here's $5 to send it. Hey, you know what? $5 to send it. That sounds like a t shirt. Yeah. <laughs> going to send it. Okay, we're just preparing things here. Make sure the green light is always on. Push the rod back to the interface to operate first extrusion. Okay. Here, we'll put that out there. And I'm going to turn it on and send it. Beep. So now we just have to bring this back. So we go to uh, extrusion. And there's in and out. 
There's pre-putter and print putter and back putter. Okay, I want the select back putter, then select out. Okay, select the back range. The largest range is recommended when back. Okay, back range. Okay, and then back back putter, back putter. Select back putter, and then select out. Okay. So nothing's happening. It's making noise. It's making noise. Nothing is turning. Nothing is moving. Oh wait, there is. I'm sorry, it is. Where? Over here. Very slowly. Here, ready? No. Just look right there. Right there. Just watch it. Watch it. Slowly. Very slow. It's a slow dipping mechanism. That's fine. That makes sense, though. That's fine. That's fine. Look, we, we're going to have some time here, which means I can pay attention to the chat. The Edge of Tech with 10. That's two fives. Thank you for that. Nice. Is that you, Jim? Let's see. The world's first ceramic torture toaster. No, that would be a hard fail. I don't think ceramics are meant... It's like when I had that gummy 3D printer. They said, print a Benchy. And I was like, okay. And I sent it. And the Benchy, while it didn't look good, it tasted good. And that's the important part. This one uh, isn't going to taste good because it's ceramics. But uh, a bench is going to require, or I'm sorry, a torture toaster is going to require a lot of 3D printer operations that I don't think a ceramic printer can do very well. So probably no. Probably no. Phil Nolan, hydration time. Oh, yes. I've oh, got... Yeah. Uh, I've got a Coke Zero. Oh. I, I forgot to get a milkshake when I got my pizza, so I'm stuck with a, a Coke Zero. I'm all out of rum. Here. There we go. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's become longer. Anthony Maggio, a ceramic mini Joel. No. <laughs> maybe. Well, maybe the top half? Maybe the top half? This is slow. This is slow. Like, you're forced to just take some time. How far does that have to go? Like, all the way? Oh, it just stopped. Okay, so let's go back to <laughs> Answer my back putter out. Hmm. Oh, I see. So the back putter, this is this one. And then the front putter, print putter, pre-putter? I don't know. Then there's that one. Oh. We have a couple putters here. John E. Robinson with a fiver. Hey, Joel, I vote for sending it. Aye, aye. We will send it. It's just, it's going to take a little while to back this up. I mean, it looks good, but we got to back it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coulter Robinson, sustenance is for sissies. Yeah, who needs oxygen? <laughs> yeah, you can choose the largest return stroke of 2,000, which is, uh, I did do that. I definitely did that. It's just going to take a couple 2,000 strokes. There's that uh, Garth Brooks song, The Red Strokes. No? That was from the, was that, that was from the 90s. Wow. Well, it's Garth Brooks. It's AGP question. Yes, I did set it to 2,000. Over 9,000, I wish, right? Andrew Rogers, 499. You out of your mind? Cinco de Mayo today equals tequila. Not a fan of tequila. And tequila and I don't get along. We're not friends. I'm a pirate. I drink rum. <laughs> what size putters are they using? Ooh, that's a good question. They look, uh, this one looks smaller. And the one uh, controlling the y-axis does look smaller. Or, I can't see it, but it's fitting in here, so it must be smaller. This one is a sizable one. I don't know the size, though. Oh, JT just got called away. Bye, JT. Thanks for visiting us. J.D., drink every time he says stroke. I mean, 
for a moment there, there was a lot going on, but then now there's nothing going on. Back putter, out. So there it goes. It's puttering. Drew C, Joel, did you watch the SN15 test? Yes, yes, that's, I, I was able to watch that and it was awesome. And then it landed, and it yep. didn't blow up, and it didn't go farther into the sky afterwards. It was just, it was fantastic. Complete and total success. I loved it. Loved it. Apparently there's a, also a rocket that's just free-falling towards the Earth right now. So it's a, it's a booster stage. Yeah, a booster stage. A booster yeah. stage. Yeah. And it most likely will hit where there is no population. Correct, yeah. yeah, yeah. Justin Smith with a fiver. Can you make a video on the ceramic resin for SLA, SLA printers? I could, definitely. Uh, if you go watch Integza... His name is Joel as well. Good dude. But in Tegza, he's the one that uses the SLA 3D printers with the ceramic resin to make nozzles and uh, puts fire through them. It's a lot of fun. I would recommend. Check out Integza. I-N-T-E-G-Z-A. Integza on YouTube. Austin Green with a fiver. Hey, Joel. Broke graduate student studying coral biology here. Would love to test this for printing coral settlement tiles once you're done with it. Oh, that's really interesting. So the settlement tiles, are those ceramic, I guess? I don't know anything about coral biology, but I don't know if that can happen. So Iazo is in the chat here. Maybe reach out to them and establish a relationship. And who knows? This might be just exactly what you need. And that nine with a tenor. That's two fives. Watching you and Neil Patrick Harris brought back memories of my first 3D print. Any plans on introducing 3D printing to other celebrities? Yes. Beyond that, I can't say, but yes. <laughs> yes. And we do have some more projects with Neil Patrick Harris coming out. Uh, we have a thing and another thing. And once it's safe to do so, even another thing. So, yeah, we've got some more stuff coming. Uh, this is just the beginning. I love bringing 3D printing to people, whether it's you at home or celebrities that everybody knows or someone in between. And so uh, the the... The future is very exciting. Let's just put it right there. Back putter. Out. Ooh. So what happens if the return... Oh, I'm going to say it, so they're going to have to drink. The return stroke of 2,000, what if that is too much? Will it go... Duh, 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 or do you just have to guess? We're going to find out. Yeah, we're going to find out. <laughs> Aaron Loveless. Hello, Joel. From New Zealand. Nice. That's awesome. Hey, back. Phil Nolan, can the microwave still be used for food after the firing? I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to assume yes and continue as business as, business as usual. <laughs> Should find that out. We use that microwave. CNC maker, tomatoes are disgusting. Oh, I see you know in Texas. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Mike, small three-story tall fire. Oh, is that from the uh, from the from the the test SN15? Right. I guess so. Magic Steve 83 with a fiver. This five dollars was being a jerk to me. So here, you take him. <laughs> Fine. I suppose we can make that work. I've got your five. I put him over here. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'll take jerk fives. Spore luck. Think about celebrities. They're people. They have the same interests as everyone else. Exactly. Yes, they do. But here's the interesting part, Sporluck. Celebrities have an audience. So I, I know I have an audience within 3D printing. That's why you all are watching me out there. But there are celebrities that have a massive worldwide audience with a majority of people who, who know who they are, such as Neil Patrick Harris. And it's exciting because, yes, they are normal people, everyday people, and they have interests just like us. But when they find joy in their interests and it's something that they want to spread the message on, such as 3D printing, then it just gets more people excited about it. And that's, that's the joy right there. Not in, oh my gosh, I'm working with celebrities. It is, oh my gosh, I'm working with someone who is also awesome and has an audience and wants to share it with their audience. That's the, the heart of it, right? That's the goal. Ryan Senpai, A10. So is that, it must be an Aussie 10. Are there any 3D printers that you would recommend in regards to best performance at low cost? I'm planning on buying a Prusa Mini Plus, but wanted a second opinion. Prusa Mini Plus, great option. Mm -hmm. Wonderful printer, does a good job. The CR10 Smart that I recently unboxed on a stream, uh, we have a print coming up on it on Sunday, and it looks really good. 
easy to use, easy to assemble. Uh, I've had a good luck with that one. Uh, I'll, I'll, obviously, like the Ender 3 V2 is good. You can go follow uh, Chuck Hellebuck, Film It Friday. He talks about the Ender series of machines. Oh, look at that. Um, I'm going to go back putter, out. Uno, uno mas. We're almost there. It's almost time to send it. This must be like a gear reduction sort of thing because this is spinning. It's going... So it's maybe like a worm gear or something? I don't know. It's a thing. Joseph Meyer, 499. Are you out of your mind? Hey, Joel, have you gotten your hands on the new Craftware Pro Slicer for your CraftBot Flow machines? I'm trying it for the first time with mine. I did. I was able to download it and make a print with it and uh, even though I had top layers specified, it didn't put any top layers on my model. And in the Facebook group, everybody said that's beta. You probably shouldn't use it yet. And so I stopped using it. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't put down the top layers. I was like, what's going on here? I specified top layers and didn't put them down. Top layers are an integral part of 3D printing. Kevin J, it is a worm gear. Thank you, worm gear, that's right. Print and play with a Canadian too. That's a, that's a loony. No, that's a toonie. That's a toonie. Would you recommend the Kodama Obsidian? James, you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man. Why do you got to hurt me like that, James? You gave me a toonie for that too. Okay, it's going to get to the end here. So close. I hope nothing bad happens. Same. Ooh. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, Stopped that, it. That's the way to do it. Yeah. yeah, that's one way to stop it. Just turn the power off. Well, it was at the end. What do you want me to do? Tripod's Garage, $9.99. Are you out of your mind? Did I miss the Patrick Swayze moment? First frosty beverage on me. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. No, um... No one's ghost came up behind me and helped me carve some pottery with my hands. Yet. <laughs> well, I, have. I know that's uh, not the same movie. It's not the same movie, but you know, it's Patrick Swayze. That's true. Come on, Joe Cocker, classic. So that's gonna fit on right there. You better hope it does. <laughs> this requires a little bit of room to operate, which is fine. So do I. You, you require some room? Yeah. Uh, 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 let's see if I do that. I guess that's just to hold it. <laughs> Print play with a, another Canadian too. An apology toonie. <laughs> I love that. This one from before that. Just FYI. Did I? Yeah. Uh, Joseph Cobble with a 20. That's four fives. Uh... Fivers for Joel, Sean, David, and YouTube's cut. Aw, did you hear that, David? You got a five or two. Milkshakes when you get up here. There we go. But I can't have. Oh, okay. So I guess I want that fully on the plunger, maybe? I don't think that's going anywhere. Um, okay, so, you get back in there, Clay. <laughs> Just going to do that so I can. Does that go on there? No, that one doesn't go on there. Is it that one? <laughs> Which one? Got to attach that, right? Is it that one? No, it's not that one. 
You're running out of ones. I know. Uh. Uh. Oh wait. Oh, it is that one. Oh. Okay. I understand what's going on now. So this is. So I need. Make some room. Hey, look at that. That's ceramic. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't eat it. Something, said, something about the steel sheet needing to be... Uh, I can talk. The steel sheet needs to be installed in reverse. Steel sheet installed in reverse. This? I don't know. Just someone said it in chat, according to David. Uh, that's one giant toothpaste squeezer you have there from Daniel Pentecost with a 505. Thanks, Daniel. Dane Yora, Jora, sent 406, ordered the CR10 smart while watching your unboxing, already have an Ender 3 Pro. I'm looking forward to playing with the Purge, or with the larger print bed. It's really cool. I think you'll really enjoy it. Ron Floyd with a fiver. Hey, Ron. Technically, it is a worm and a worm gear two-part assembly. There we go. I don't think it matters which way this goes. I think it really doesn't. I, I promise you. I promise. Well, we're about to find out. Just gonna send it. Yeah, we're sending it. Come on. This is what we do. We send it. Woo! Um. <laughs> okay. I like that. That was a terrible sound. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was. So that that whole steel sheet being installed in reverse thing is, is from the company. It Just is? Yep. Why though? Okay, why? I can, I can change it. It's not a problem, but... Well, there's that lip on the bottom there. Yeah, the lip. But... But why? No, no, I, I, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not laying any sort of blame. I'm just, I'm genuinely curious. I don't know why this needs to be attached in the other direction. <laughs> you bet it hangs up on the side. What do you mean? No, see, this stays out here. Like this doesn't. This piece doesn't go anywhere. Like the plunger goes like that, and this stays out here. It doesn't attach to anything? No. It just lays like, it just lays like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, this, it specifically, it sits on the side. They show in the pictures it going the other way, but... Aaron F. Geared, it's fine. Send it. Send it. <laughs> God, you guys. Okay. So now, what's David saying? Oh, it's a screen time request for my kids. So it's not David. Extrusion, largest range, and then in. Okay, and then, oh, so pre-putter. Okay, so now back, back and um, extrusion, and then, and then what did I miss? You need, uh, nothing from Chad, it's from David. Oh, okay. Um, extrusion, and then pre, uh, so 2000, gonna send it. Pre-putter, pre-putter, and in. Here we go. Okay, it is slowly Pre-putter. Look at, look, look, look! What are we looking at? Ah! Nice. Oh my gosh, this might actually happen. Why would you say that? Oh, did I say that? Mitzi Barlett with a fiver. Thank you. Uh, there's a message that the blade is backwards. Yes. I did see that. Thank you very much. No, and I thank you for the $5. I'll put that to good use. 
and your name, send a fiver in the super chat. Send it. We're going to send it. That's right. Zine sent a fiver. Hey, Zine. For the Children's Hospital, isn't this printer like the concrete printers that build houses? Similar in that there is a clay-like substrate being sent through tubes laid up uh, in a pattern, layer by layer, um, just at a much smaller scale. Uh, plus, with the ones that print houses, I think you need to reinforce with rebar or a specially formulated concrete or something. This one, um, I don't think you need to do that. But similar, similar in that there is, there is a, a clay being sent through the pipes to build something ad, in an additive fashion. So yeah, this and the thing that builds the houses, similar. This could build a house for your mouse. It could, mouse house. Joe V, $8.13 in the super chat. That must be a, a, cur a currency conversion. A, hi Joel, a crisp high five to you. I would love to see you revisit the Flash Forge Adventurer 3. Nope, I have one and it seems great but it has its quirks, even with mods. Thanks for the great vids. Um, I'll try my best. We're currently talking with Flash Forge, and we might actually have the Adventurer 3. We'll see what happens. Closer, closer. It's almost there. Look at this. Look at this, it's literally almost there. This is riveting television, everybody. Woo. It's almost like Geraldo opening up Al Capone's vault. Mm. Probably not. Not quite. Not quite. It's feeding in. I'm just going to put that right there. Now, I'll, I'll let it fall on the plate. The MDF. When there is clay extruded from the needle, you can select shutdown and then start printing. Oh, okay. I've got my finger on the button. Oh, I see it. Nice. Oh, look at it. It's got ooze. It's oozing. Like Ivan. It's gonna be. Okay. Select shutdown. Okay. Uh, printing. Put in the SD card. Uh, leveling and clay pre-extrusion is the most critical. Please do it carefully and patiently. Or we just send it. Yes. Wait, is it a... There we go. Okay. Okay. Printing. So back. Um, printer. Okay. Oh, here's what we've got. We've got um, cup. We have cup. That's what we need. We need a cup. Jeez. Um... No, stop. She's getting the crap out of me. That's what are you doing? You already had pizza. I know, and it was good. I'm jealous. Excuse you. So. The needle is. This is what I was afraid of. It's just going to hold it the whole time? Yep. <laughs> How long is the print? Seven hours. No, I'm kidding. Can you tell me what David's saying? Because I have to hold the gantry up. Um, nothing. A text came through. It just came through late. Oh, it came through late. Okay. Yeah. Unless it's only to you and not to me. No, no, it came through late. It was the one that I saw before. Oh, look at that. So that is making the, uh, the texture on the outside of the cup. Oh, neat. Uh, no, I'm sorry I have to hold this, but that... Abort. That gantry was uh, quite... And the nozzle. So actually, uh, the, the, I had a chocolate 3D printer that I tried. 
The chocolate 3D printer was very similar to this and it used the same sort of plastic nozzle in order to spit the chocolate out on the bed. The problem was the machine they sent to me was fixed with hot glue on the inside and so the plastic nozzle kept diving into the bed and breaking. And they said, don't worry about that. What? Just send it back and we will send you another one to try. And that was the last I ever heard of them. <laughs> Okay, I don't know why it's... Come on. Oh, James Paul with a 50! You helped show me where my true passion in life is. Dang. Thanks for just being you and sharing that with the world. That's James. Awesome. What? That's awesome. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, James, thank you very much. That's incredible of you to say, and I'm very thankful that I was able to, to, to inspire you in such a way. Wow, thank you, thank you very much. So according to the Ayazo, uh, you have to re remove the red tape because now they, the Z-axis can't rise. It seems to be rising. Yeah, it looks to be rising just fine. Here, you want me to just... <laughs> Come hold something or? No. It seems to be rising. There was a little point where it wasn't rising. We got a little layer shift, but whatever. Okay, look at that. The tape is, oh, it's stuck forever now. I got it. I'm still gonna hold this or else it's just gonna smash itself. Company is saying, remove the gantry and let the gantry go. Send it. <laughs> sure. I let it go. I took the tape off. And this is where we're at. So obviously, because this is printing in clay, what's going to happen is the out, uh, the out of level gantry, uh, the, the clay itself will compensate for that, right? You're in a vase mode and eventually it's going to get to a point where everything is just fine. Uh, it doesn't solve the, the, the problem of having the gantry be so not level. but we're getting ourselves a, a textured cup. So look, in, in doing this sort of stuff, wait, I'm gonna make sure there's no, I'm not missing anything. Sean, can you scroll the, uh, the activity feed down a little bit? No, not at the moment. Okay, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll read the top ones then. Uh, Shannon Miller with a fiber, you also have a 3D printer, you need to remove the red tape. I removed the red tape, but that's not the issue, honestly. Uh, Magic Steve 83, watching the clay move through the Bowden is like watching the, yod the yodeler on the Price is Right slowly marching to his doom. Yodel, 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 yodel. Yep, I know that. Uh, Ethan's dad, Marcus, sent a $5.99 super chat. Thank you. $5.99, you out of your mind? For more clay and lasers, you know it. Joe V with an 813. Did I get that one? I did get that one. We are caught up. Nice. How much is this? Do we know how much this is? I don't. Uh, I, I don't. I checked the Kickstarter. They've already fulfilled their Kickstarter. Uh, I don't know what the price is, but the link is down in the description if you want to check it out. No, the issue here, the issue here is that uh, there is something physically wrong with the gantry, and it's unfortunate. It's not a killer in this, at this point because uh, through strength, determination, and a whole bunch of send it, we, we got it going. Had I not lifted it up at the beginning, the nozzle would have destroyed itself. And that would have meant a fail. Sadness. <laughs> I don't think putting the tape on was the issue. I think the tape precluded a broken part from working in a better way. So something's wrong in here, and that needs to be fixed. And granted, this is a Kickstarter machine. This is pre-production. There's a good chance this is going to be fixed before they ship it out to any of the backers. A really good chance. Indeed.
So here, since this cup is going, it looks like we're going to have a cup to put in a kiln. That one right there. And so I don't know if it's in the instructions anywhere, but I need to know how long to put it in the microwave for. And so if, uh, uh, Yazo, Yaz if you're in the chat, I just need to know how long to put it in the microwave for. There we go. Uh, Mandalore Y01 with a fiver, high five. There's something to be said about the weight distribution of a dual Z axis support versus single support. Well, that's true. Like you can do this in a way where it is successful. Look at the Prusa Mini, look at the, the, the King Rune MP3, I think it what it is. Plus having all of the material off the machine means that this is way, way lighter. Hey, look, we're done. Tooling around with a fiver, nine hours left on the campaign and Kickstarter. Cool. Hey, Sean, can you go grab the microwave for me? <laughs> no. Yes. Cool. All the stuff on the microwave. Okay, uh, Sam, one, two, three, four, five, six. I believe it's 35 minutes. H. Young, 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, there's a, there's a bit of difference between those two numbers. Uh, Z-Wise, it's doing fine since you left it alone. It's true. It compensated for the problems that were inside the machine. Uh, going in a, that spiral mode and you're putting down a very soft material, it's eventually going to find its way into correcting itself. The problem was at the beginning, because there's such a dip in the gantry, the nozzle found its way into the build plate and then started scraping it. And it's a plastic nozzle, so it was going to break. So I had to lift it up. And that's why it corrected itself. Does it come with it? Stephen Royer, does it come with a kiln? It does. This is it right here. This is a microwave kiln. What are you saying, David? Over, oh, okay. So the company is saying over 35 minutes. All right. Uh, print the second one without lifting it. I could, Teresa, I could definitely do that. And we could just see what happens. But there's no need to, right? We know what the issue is. The gantry isn't level. There's no amount of compensation that's gonna solve for that. You're not level. <sighs> the company said 35 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna put it over where? <laughs> oh, there's a glass plate in there. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful, dude. I would have thrown you this, but I don't think that would have gone very well. I would have caught it. I mean, we're just, we're all about sending it, right? Yep. There you go. There we go. <laughs> cool. I gotta come around here. Yeah, readjust that, that glass plate. Yeah. Uh, can you see me doing stuff over here? What? No. I see your back. Thanks. One moment. Uh, so from the company, where am I? Yeah. okay. I got it. Do whatever you gotta do. Okay. I'll make it work. So from the company, it's gonna take 35 minutes. Lone Wolf, Joel, send it. Just, just send the second print and let it print or yeah, fail. I agree. It's, it takes, yeah, the, it takes the bed, 35 minutes, so why not? Yeah, the bed is adjustable, uh, Ethan's dad. You were saying the bed is adjustable. It's true. But then if your gantry is like this and your bed, you compensate like this, then you make a skewed part. Interesting. Let's see. But you can center the part after it's dry. If you have a hair dryer, you can use or a hair dryer to dry it. Okay. So... I need a step-by-step -step here, and there's nothing in the instructions, and so what's the next step from here? Do I slide it off of that, put it in the kiln, and put it in the microwave, or do I use, I, I have a, a heat gun here. I, I mean, I can, I can put some heat on it, and so I just, no layer shift. I just need, what? That's a big layer shift. It does have a layer shift, and we know why that happened. Austin Green, dry it first. Do not fire it wet. 
Okay, so we need a... Hammer of Dune. Junk. It is not junk. I guarantee you it's not junk, and I don't think it's fair to say that. It will explode if you fire it wet. Well, that sounds fun. Sure. <laughs> sure. Dry, then fire in the microwave. Okay. Dry first before the microwave. Dry before microwave. Put foil in the microwave. Shut up, David. <laughs> I vote explode it. Send it straight. Dry it first. So, like... <laughs> right, if you fire wet ceramics, it explodes, is what you're saying. But this isn't pure ceramic. There's a, there's a binder agent in this that allows it to flow, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. So the chat's right here. I'm just trying to read it. Send it wet, Charles. Thanks, Charles. I'll send. No, I'm not going to send it. I want to do it the right way, right? We use this microwave. John Bryant, two bucks. Microwave third of my minutes. You're going to kill it. Uh, Nexus Lee, do you have a blowtorch? I do, just not here. Please. Soak it in gas first, then microwave, then microwave. Thanks, Sam. That'll work just fine. So just use a heat gun. Okay. Dry it. Okay, David said, please dry it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go get my heat gun. Where's my heat Oh, my heat gun's in here. So it should be in your desk. No, it's... Uh, oh, in the... Is it? Uh, oh, is it at home? Is it, is it in the desk? I have my air compressor. <laughs> Yikes. Guess what I don't have. Uh, I got to go looking for a heat gun. <laughs> <laughs> so Iazo says you can try it in the microwave right now, but they haven't tried that yet, so they don't know what's going to happen. I know exactly. Well, well, apparently half the chat is saying it's just going to explode. I don't want to explode it. But I got to look for a heat gun. And I don't... I don't have a heat gun. I, I have one at home. I have a heat gun at home. It's great. I just don't know where my other heat gun is. Would a dehydrator work? Oh, Robert George with the idea. We have a dehydrator. Sean, could you go grab the dehydrator? It's going to be in the back room with the orange spool on top of it. Yeah, a dehydrator. John Hunter, fart on it. No. <laughs> Jeez. You guys. You guys with the ideas. That last one wasn't really an idea. Send it. Send it. Send it. Company says send it. Wet. Sure, but company's not going to buy me a new microwave if something bad happens. Three D crazy. Someone call nine one one if he sticks that thing in the microwave. Exactly. There's some. Filament. So look at I've got the the filament dryer from Matter Hackers here, and I can just. Uh, Is that just a thing? got cat hair in there for some reason? So I can dry it in this. Right. Sure. Yeah, I think that'll work. Let's see. That's a turntable. I probably don't need that. How long do I dry it for? Long enough. Uh, fantasy engineered. Uh, no, don't tell me he's going to kill the beef jerky. What? What? Uh, okay. So here's the part. Do I just put it in this thing and dry it? And how long do I dry it for? He also, he also said you can just, without putting it in the kiln... Put it in the microwave for five minutes to dry it. What? <laughs> it's no! It's in there. You can't see it very well, but it's in there. It is not like a normal kiln. It will get dry before it gets too hot. Okay. Uh, toaster oven. No. Microwave without the kiln. 
No, no. Oh. I don't want to ruin my microwave. This sounds terrible. Be honest, you paid like 25 bucks for that. Yeah. <laughs> Steven Jeffrey, Joel, dude, this idea is just kind of dumb. No, 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 no. Don't think it's dumb. Think about it as not fully documented yet. Caleb over at Make did it. Uh, Dehydrator is going to take forever. Yes. Beatbox. No. Next step is to get a good drink. Yes. <laughs> Just blowing it really hard. Yeah. That won't help. <laughs> Hair dryer or microwave without the kiln. Why would microwave without the kiln work? Because then it won't get too hot? That's what, that's what... Let's see. What's David saying? That's what microwaves do. heat up them water molecules. <laughs> David said my wife is going to come over with the heat gun. <laughs> All right, sweet. Sure. I, was, I mean, I was going to offer to go get it, but I mean, then you'd be here alone. It's fine. Mickey is on her way. Okay. Nice. It's a good thing we're like... We're close to the house, so it's good. Not too far. So we'll just put that right there. Okay, my wife is on the way with the heat gun. In the meantime, how y'all do it? And there we go. Mickey's coming with the heat gun. Okay, when she's here, you'll run and grab it? Sure. Sweet. <sighs> oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> tooling around with a fiber. <laughs> Could you scroll down a little bit on the, on the activity feed? Let's see, where'd we leave off? There. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, okay. Uh, Joe Zero sent a fiver. Uh, currently have a TiVo Tarantula and a Flashforge Dreamer. Want to get another printer for faster, more accurate prints? What would you recommend? Uh, tons of them. Any of the Ender 3 series, the new CR10 Smart seems really cool. The Sir Moon D1 I've had good luck with. Uh, get a Prusa Mini, get a Prusa Mark III. Those are really good as well. If you want to go more expensive, you have uh, lots of options as well. I like my G Max machine. It's kind of pricey though, understandably. If you want to go resin, there's all sorts of options for resin printers as well. Like you could, you, you can close your eyes and throw a dart and probably hit a number of 3D printers that would work for you. <sighs> Boy, it's cool to have choices, right? Mm. It's cool. In 787 with a fiber, trimming the bed to the tilted gantry will compensate for the tilt like any other cantilever or single Z gantry. Yes, it will compensate for it, but you'll end up with a skewed part because your part won't be like this, like this. It'll be, it'll be like that. It'll be skewed. Pagan Wizard with a fiber, check the screws or bolts that are holding the gantry. They might be loose. By the way, how do you move the cup from the bed to the kiln without crushing it? I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, John Bryant sent two bucks. Mike with 35 minutes, gonna kill it. Send it twice, appreciate that. Tooling around with a fiver. If you like Sean, who's facing the microwave door, please try it first. <laughs> <laughs> the Siege Tower GNC with a buck 99, are you out of your mind, says, company says, send it. And I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do, but my wife is on the way with a heat gun. Andrew Rogers with 4.99, are you out of your mind? For microwave replacement fund. <laughs> exactly, right? Nanya Music with a fiver. Here's five for a mod to get rid of whoever keeps spamming fart on it. Sweet. Yeah. Hey, any of the mods? No holds barred. Just ban people if they're being dumb. Uh, Yami Yugi with a 4.99. Are you out of your mind? I had to say I appreciate you and your channel deeply. Because of you, I have started a successful 3D printing business. That is amazing, Yami Yugi. Uh, congratulations. That's awesome. Good, good job. The Rebel Robot with a buck 99. Are you out of your mind? Fantasy Engineered with a fiver. Thank you very much. High five. Mike Armstrong, 499. Are you out of your mind? Check out what the filament. Check out what the filament. P.S. The hair is looking extra magical tonight. It is, yeah. Freshly showered and uncut for quite some time. <laughs> Bob Carnes with a $15 super chat. That is one, two, three fives. Mrs. Telling wins the stream. Did she, did she type in there or is she just, uh, or is she just, uh, did she, did she say she was on her way or is she, she winning cause she's on her way. That's what I bet it is. Mike Armstrong, 499. Yes, I'm out of my mind. That's amazing. Sean Hussein with five new microwave fund. Hey, that means we're up to like 10 bucks. 
Daddy Shamurai sent $25. One, two, three, four, five high fives. This is for a microwave if you break it. Put it in wet and send it in caps. Thanks for the hours of content every week. The community appreciates you. Steve Royer with a fiver. Use a string or a piece of floss to remove it from the bed and put it in the kiln. Thanks for the fiver. High five. That's a good one. Brian Vines. The suspense is killing me. You. Getting the vapors. Brennan Green sent a $1.63 super chat. Thanks, Brennan. Set it on the heater vent. Mine is on the wall. <laughs> oh, I hear my wife. Heat gun incoming. Heat gun incoming. James Foley with a tenor. Helped to pay for a new microwave. Austin Green with two. Defrost mode microwave to gently dry it. I mean, maybe. But James Foley, thanks for the tenor. Austin Green, thanks for the two. Sweet, heat gun. Thanks. Yeah. So just, uh, go. just go? Look yeah. at this thing, man. Look at it. It's a powerful heat gun. Right Look here. at it. It's impressive. So we'll set the temp at, what, 300? Don't oh, shoot your hand. Jesus. To look around with the fiber, use a standard 3D printer pancake flipper. Exactly. This thing isn't warm. I don't know if it needs to be warmer. So how do I know when it's dry? I guess that's the next question. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Welcome to my new channel, Drying Clay. I'm your host, Joel the Clay Dryer. And in this episode, we're going to dry clay. Look at it dry. It's so dry. No! <laughs> Spatula. It should turn a light white? Seriously? You droop it to test dryness. You weigh it. Won't it still be wet on the inside? There we go. Pick it up a notch. I mean, if we're going to do it, we're going to send it, right? Ooh, it looks like you're warping it. Is it any lighter color? I don't know, man. If the cup doesn't collapse when you pick it up by the walls, then it's dry. Here, let's test it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> CNC maker, you've heard of watching grass grow, right? Clay dries at the same speed. You all right over there? I'm just... You got so mad you knocked something down over here somehow. How is that possible? <laughs> I have no idea. How is that possible? And we're like 10 feet away. What if I set it to go really hot? Yeah. At this point, I'm just hoping for a fire. Tech Ninja, someone wake me up when he's done. Yeah, me too. Same. Like, this is, this is terrible. I mean, it's got some sturdiness to it. Well, there goes the bottom. That's all right. We sent it. Remember that was when it was having problems? Yep. There. I mean, look at that. I can't. Took my finger off the trigger. 
It's definitely wet, but I mean. You microwave it for five minutes. I could. Like, I get it. Like, this is going to take forever. <laughs> this is going to take forever. <sighs> From the company, put it in the microwave for five minutes outside the kiln. They've never done that, and they don't know what it's going to do. <laughs> I'll be hiding behind things. I'm just... I don't, These are all your cameras, right? Yeah, okay, we're good. I don't think that's a good idea. Like, the bottom's definitely not dry. Try the bottom. You can't have a wet bottom. This is gonna hurt. It's hot. No, not like that. It's really hot. Oh, my lord. It's really hot. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Jeez. Okay. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> I'm so sad. Like... Like, this is like doge, right? You just want to be like, oh, you want to hodl all the way and just throw it in the microwave and call it done. And But no. I don't want it to blow up. No, you want the doge to blow up. Well, sure, you want, you know, to the moon, right? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Phil Nolan, nobody likes a wet bottom. That's what I said. Uh, dark bungle. Put the microwave in the kiln. <laughs> do we just? Yeah, man, just do it. Just do it? Okay. All right, we'll do it. Now on stage, stage, stage. Microwave, wave, wave. Well, thanks for bringing the, the uh, I'm sorry, not the microwave. Thanks for bringing the heat gun, wifey. Very kind of you. She just made it home. Good. So I just put this whole thing in the microwave because this is just, you know, compressed board, right? Man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a bad idea. This is such a bad idea. I hate you guys. I hate you guys so much. Can I, can I drink sake out of this later? It's not watertight because of the problem with the nozzle at the beginning. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. That's just going to go in. Express cook. Five minutes. Oh, boy. I don't want to knock me in front of that microwave. David says, no, not for 35 minutes. It will catch fire. I hit the five button, David, the five button. Seven times. I wish. I got lots of people saying, don't do it. Too late, man. Don't microwave. Oh, don't microwave the MDF. Okay. Oh. Nobody exploded yet. Okay. Oh, look at that. You can see steam coming off of it. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Wow. Oh, hey. It's a little drier. <laughs> why, don't, why can't I put MDF in the... It's not really MDF, but I mean, well, it's... Oh, God, I hate you guys. Okay. It's really hot. And it hurts my fingers. Well, put it in the thing. I don't want to put it on the glass. Uh, paper towel. Paper towel. Paper towel. Paper towel. Mm. A napkin. I've got a napkin. Yikes. Are we really worried? I'm kind of worried. I'm not really ever worried. Like... <laughs> Here we go. <sighs> oh, 
I just want to... Oh, the binders in the MDF are toxic. I don't know if it's real MDF. I don't know. But, you know, good to know. Okay. How are we doing? Can you, can you see? No. I'm behind boxes here. Okay. It's, it, there's warmth in there. There's warmth. Okay. Okay. Everybody's like, it's just five minutes. Just put it in there. Finish the five minutes. You've, you've, it's been going for one minute. I know, and it's really hot. <laughs> you go get your microwave. We've been replenished with... Like, we, you have been given more money than this microwave has cost. In microwave fun money. But the problem is, let's say something happens and it breaks through the glass and it goes that way and it hits the Black Magic 6K and it knocks it over and it falls on the shelf that's holding the audio equipment, which then falls over. That's not gonna, it, that, that will not happen. I promise you that won't happen. It could hit the camera. <sighs> but then we just get in Black, uh, Black Magic 6K Pro. So uh, it's a win-win, really. Bob Carnes with a fiver. Always remember, safety third. Accurate. Brant stock ramp. Full send. <laughs> I'm just waiting for something to explode, man. <laughs> How's it looking there, guys? It. I heard it pop. Yeah, it, it popped. It exploded. Oh. Have oh, a look. I can't. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Wait, I'll tell you what. I'll put it right stop, up here. Stop. I had it. No, I'm, I'm putting it up there because we've reached the pinnacle, the end. I can't see it. That's okay. I will move it for you. It's going to be hot. There it is. We blew the bottom out. There it is. Joseph Cobble. But Joel, what happens if it describes a terrible series of unfortunate events? Oh, well done. Oh, well done. Uh, so here's, here's where we're at. It exploded. <laughs> I love it. CNC Maker, we told you. Yeah, lots of people said a lot of things. I knew something bad was going to happen. I just wasn't sure if it was going to be a big bad or a small bad. And this popped more like you're heating chili and you forgot to put a paper plate on top of it and it popped and all of a sudden you've got chili in your microwave. This was kind of like this. This blew out the side. The dam gave way. <sighs> Peter Walker. Yep, it was an air bubble. There was an air bubble in there. Uh, I could tell it was, it, it was drying though. It, I mean, it was getting there. Well, I guess... Icarus flew a little too close to the clay sun. Yeah, and this this wasn't fusing. And well, anyway, <laughs> this was. I need a sad horn. <sighs> There's buttons on the roadcaster. You can hit them. I don't know what they do, man. No, just hit just hit a couple of them. I don't know what they do. What well, do they do? Like, what, what, what if they do something bad? I don't know. Monitor it. Maybe one of them. One of them is a sad horn. There One of them is a sad horn. There isn't a sound effect button. There's eight buttons on the right. What? They're all colorful? Oh, oh all of these. Yeah. Eh? Uh, no one knows what's going to happen. Eh? 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 <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. Uh, I can't hear it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay, so um, under normal circumstances, this is from Yazo, we need 24 hours to let the clay dry naturally instead of drying it in a microwave oven. Well, we're not going to I that didn't long. know that before starting the stream. So the, ob the, the, the object, the, the, I can't even talk right now. I know. The purpose of the stream was to uh, get a machine out of the box and see whether or not we could get a print out of it. So in that respect, we were somewhat successful. There were problems with the machine. One, the belt on Y came out. It was just zip tied together and there wasn't enough on there. They need to add a little bit more belt. Um, we've got a gantry that isn't level and it looks like it was loose inside. I did add some tape to try to stiff it up the side because I thought maybe uh, the bottom of it was resting against the side of the machine. And so if that was pushed in, it would maybe level it out as it goes up. But then it 
got stuck for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but we were able to get a print. I was able to hold the gantry up and, uh, whoa, someone gave, who gave Jason Gerald with a $50 super chat. Hey, that makes me, uh, happy. Thank you so much for that. That's like 10 fives, man. Jeez. Thank you. 3D by EB sent $2. F's in the chat. Yes. Yes. I O. You don't listen to the chat users, Joel. I do. I look at everything. The problem is there are hundreds of different opinions scrolling by really fast, even when the slow mode is on. Listen, listen, like I said, got a machine out of the box. There were problems with it from the beginning. We mitigated those problems by me hanging on to the edge so that it wouldn't destroy the nozzle when it went down to do the print. And if it was actually proper, if the machine didn't have that issue, you could tell that the extrusions started to work themselves out and it looked like you had a proper cup. Uh, before we got the machine, I didn't know there was a 24 hour period in which we had to let it dry manually before we could fire it in the microwave kiln. That wasn't explained to me and that's whatever. Um, they said, put it in the microwave. The makers of the machine said, put it in the microwave, not in the kiln for five minutes. They don't know what would happen, but it might dry it out. And it did dry it out, but it also made it explode because there was an air bubble in there. That's where we are. So they've got a couple hours left on their Kickstarter. Someone said it's 800 bucks. I don't know if that's worth it. It's up to you. But uh, at this point, I'm just going to thank you for joining the stream. And I'm, I am, I'm visibly frustrated and I don't want to take it out on camera. And so I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Thanks for everybody that donated. Thanks for the company for being in the chat and answering questions. David, thanks for monitoring down there in Los Angeles. Thanks to everybody that donated. Again, really, that means the world to me. Thanks to... I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> Thanks to my wife for dropping off the heat gun. Uh, I, I appreciate you more than I can properly express. You know, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. I'm just going to go home. I uh, love you all. As always, high five.